By the way, Kondo is truly a genius of anime. You remember when Takahata and Miyazaki made Grave of the Fireflies and My Neighbor Totoro, respectively? At that time, they tried to steal Kondo from each other. Takahata said, You can take anyone you want except for him. Please let me have Konchan. Then Miyazaki fought back, If Konchan won't join Totoro, I won't direct. So so they fought a big fight, but when they fought, they always did it directly, but both bitched indirectly to producer Toshio Suzuki. <laughs> Suzuki had a long negotiation with Miyazaki, and at the end, Suzuki said, Miyasan, you can draw, but Takahata can't. Let him have at least one skilled draftsman. It was a challenging negotiation. But while Miyazaki was crying, no, I don't want anyone else. I want Konchan. Takahata stole away Hideaki Ano as well. Quite a nerve, huh? Anyway, it was a big incident. To sum up, that's how gifted Kondo was. Now, when Miyazaki was depressed after seeing Takahata and Kondo working together for Anne of Green Gables, a new company called Telecom was about to be established. It was the animation company that later made the Castle of Cagliostro. So... Finally, we are on the later half of the timeline. Um... So, Miyazaki moved to Telecom after Conan was broadcasted. Then he was part of Little Nemo. He was the Japanese director candidate along with Takahata. Then the castle of Cagliostro was released. What happened during this one year? Am I switching to the paid part? No, not yet. There's something I need to talk about beforehand, so I'll continue the free part a bit more. I think if I ended here, I'd be ripping you off. Sorry, it's getting hot, so let me take this off. I'm like a Rakugo storyteller. I mean, I just talked about the first two minutes of pre-credit. I think the wheel of fate began to spin. When Miyazaki went to the US for Little Nemo, Hollywood recognized his talent. Actually, Miyazaki had no plan to direct the castle of Cagliostro. He said he had done everything in the first season of the TV series. Rather than that, the production of Little Nemo was a collaboration with Hollywood with a budget of $24,400,000. George Lucas was the producer and Ray Douglas Bradbury wrote the script. It was an incredible film. Miyazaki was supposed to direct it. This was planned by the evil producer Fujioka, as I mentioned earlier. When Pippi Longstocking was rejected by the author, he was already on to the next piece. His next plan was to go to Hollywood and succeed. He thought making an anime in Japan and winning a high viewing rate neither makes us acknowledged nor rich. That's wrong. So he headed to Hollywood. Look at Disney. They are successful. Osamu Tezuka, Tatsunoko Production, and Kodansha, who made Akira, all thought the same. They all wanted to go to Hollywood and make the world acknowledge Japanese anime. But when we look at history, the only guy who really went to Hollywood, rented a luxury house and lived there, interacted with the American staff for years, and actually produced an anime film, was Yutaka Fujioka. That guy with shady eyes in sunglasses. No one else could do that. 